Welcome to lecture number 12 for ECE 320, Digital Electronics, Using a Transistor as a Switch. Now, transistors make a nice buffer between many devices and something that needs more powers. Typically, the stuff you're dealing with, like microcontrollers, cell phones, function generators, they're WIMPs. They can only output typically 0 volts and 5 volts up to 20 milliamps. To drive something bigger, you need more power. That's what a transistor does. It acts as a buffer between the microcontroller, your function generator, your cell phone, and things like an LED, an 8-ohm speaker, a motor. To kind of give an example of that, uh, here is an embedded system from 376. I want to drive a speaker. So here's your transistor, a couple of resistors. With it, I can get some power and make enough noise to annoy your friends and neighbors. Or from Electroboom, he's got an LED. Uh, that's being powered by his cell phone. What the cell phone outputs is a little pulse. The pulse goes through a transistor that turns on your LED. So these are 100 LEDs. When you flash them, you can get a strobe effect and have things like the water look like it's stationary. So that's some of the reasons to use the transistor as a switch. I want to get more power out. And of course, more is always better. So how do you do that? Well, the basic circuit is the same one we looked at before. I've got my load, uh, headphone, LED, whatever you want. I've got a power supply and a load. I'm trying to push current through it. I'd like to add an electronic switch. The electronic switch is the transistor. So I've got a load line right here. If there is no current flowing, I have 10 volts uh, across my transistor. When the transistor turns on, ideally it's zero volts, and I have 100 milliamps. Actually, you're not going to get quite to zero volts. You'll only get to like 0.2 volts when you saturate. As I vary the input voltage, meaning vary the input current, if the input voltage is zero, I'm off right here. If the input voltage is large enough so that the current that I'm allowing is more than I need, meaning that beta IB is more than 100 milliamps, I saturate. And the great thing about that is the transistor doesn't dissipate that much power. Power is volts times amps. So right here, power equals zero. The current is zero. Right here, the power is almost zero because the voltage is almost zero. So you don't need a very big transistor. They can be the small 3904s and turn on and off a fairly large load. That's the idea behind a transistor as a switch. And notice, you need the emitter tied to ground. It doesn't work if you put the load on the emitter side, because uh, what's going to happen is if this is 5 volts, then this is 0.7. This can never be more than 4.3 volts. You need the load up on the collector side. So here's the collector, emitter, base. For a switch, the load goes on the collector side, and 321 analog electronics will move that down to the emitter side. But that's a different problem, different course. And it's kind of important to saturate your transistor. You might have seen this in the labs. If you see a breadboard with a little melt spot on it, what that means is the transistor was in the active region. So again, if I'm right here, I'm off, the power equals zero. If I'm saturated, the power is almost zero. Right here, this is bad. This is the max power. If you're operating in this point, the transistor gets hot. These little bitty 3904s don't have any way to dissipate heat. If you're putting a lot of power to them, they're going to get hot and they melt the circuit board. So if you see this, that's an indication that that was the transistor operated in the active region. You're not supposed to do that. You want to either be off or saturated. So when I want to use the transistor as a switch, you kind of need to pick what transistor you want to use. Uh, pick one that can handle the current. If I use, or if I need less than 200 milliamps, I can use the 3904 NPN transistor. If I need more than 200 milliamps, then the 6144, it looks kind of like this, there's a little hole right there. That can handle 13 amps peak, 10 amps continuous. Uh, the reason they do that is the strobe light. 
uh, this thing right here. Let me show you some. So that's the strobe light. The current actually looks like this. A very brief pu pulse. That's the strobing action. That might be for 100 milliseconds, then it turns off. If you have this kind of use, I can handle 13 amps. If I want to drive continuous load, like a DC motor, that'd be 10 amps. That's the 6144. The advantage of the 2904 is they're dirt cheap, 4 cents each versus 62 cents each. Uh, but either one can be used as a switch. This one's cheaper. The trick to use to get as a switch, I've got to have enough base current, meaning pick the base current so that the gain times the base current is more than I need. For example, suppose I want to drive a 200 milliamp LED. The first step is ignore this guy, come up with a circuit that powers the LED directly. To do that, you need a voltage source, a resistor to limit the current. Uh, once you come up with that circuit, then I can add an electronic switch. That's the transistor. This is the switch that turns on and off the LED. When the input voltage is zero, the current is zero and the transistor is off. When the input voltage is five volts, I'll get base current. And as long as I pick it so that the base current times the gain is more than the current that I need, uh, that's the IC right here, this will saturate and it'll be either off or saturated. So this is one way to do it. You can also use PNP transistors. On the NPN, the emitter is tied to ground. On the PNP, the emitter is tied to power. This is for the high side. Again, this diode is all important. If there's current in that diode, it turns on. So if over here, if this is five volts, there's no current, no current means off. If this is zero volts, then I do have current. So this current going this way, I think it's amplified by beta, allows current this way. That's your switch. So I can disconnect the load on the high side, that's a PNP, or the low side, NPN. This is what we'll be doing most of the semester. But you can do it the other way if you want. Uh, example. Suppose I want to turn on an LED at 100 milliamps. First thing is to find the collector resistor. When I saturate, the voltage at the collector should be 0.2 volts. The LED has a 1.9 volt drop across it. If this assumes it's a red LED. The voltage drop across the red LED is constant, about 1.9, ideal diode model. That makes this 2.1 volts. Leaving 2.9 volts across R, 2.9 volts at 100 ohms is 29 ohms. RC needs to be 29 ohms. Now let's find the base resistor. If IC is 100 milliamps divided by beta, IB has to be at least IC over beta, at least one milliamp. So pick a number bigger than one, less than 25 milliamps, typically the max current for a function generator, cell phones, pick processors, things like that. It's like 25 milliamps. Pick a number between one and 25. Um, I chose two. And when you do this, don't be really subtle. Don't pick 1.001. Uh, have a little bit of safety margin, so like maybe double it. If I pick IB to be 2 milliamps, this output's 5 volts, this is 0.7 volts, again this is a diode, voltage drop across the silicon diode is 0.7. 4.3 volts at 2 milliamps is 2150 ohms. And it doesn't have to be exactly 2150 ohms, there's a lot of room for slop. Uh, something 2 milliamps-ish, so 2k would work, 2.2k would work. As long as IB is bigger than 1 milliamp, you got a working design. So this will turn on and off an LED at 100 milliamps and give you like the strobe light. That's what was happening over here. In circuit lab, I can check my design. If I build the circuit and the input is zero volts, then the current is gonna be zero, kind of obviously. If the input is 5 volts, then the base current is 93 milliamps. No, that's too high. That's the bar one right here. There's the base current, 2.1 milliamps. And what I care about, it's less than 25 milliamps, because that's all a lot of loads, like 
pick processors, um, function generators can produce. The current over here through the LED, uh, that is IR2, this current. That's 93 milliamps. Um, it should be 100 milliamps. It's a little bit off, mainly because this diode is dropping too much voltage. Um, replace that with an actual red LED, 1.9 volt drop. It'll be closer. But that checks. The real check to see if you're saturated is the voltage at the collector is 0.167 volts. We assumed it's 0.2 volts when you saturate. This says it's actually 0.167. The point two, again, is just kind of a ballpark guess. It's close to zero, not quite zero. This says you'll actually be 0.167 volts. Eh, close to zero, not quite zero. It's saturated. So that's all working. And if you make a mistake, like if I make R1 too big, what's going to happen is there's not enough base current. If R1 is 10K, then the base current, that's right here, is 0.42 milliamps. The collector current over here is 60 milliamps instead of 100. And what's happening is the transistor is dumping voltage. This is in the active region. I can tell because if I look at VC, VC is 1.18 volts. If it's 0.2 volts-ish, I'm saturated. If it's five volts, I'm off. This is in between. So bigger than 0.2, less than five is active. This is in the active region. And the transistor is dumping 1.8 volts. What that does is it dumps the voltage to set the current. And you can actually calculate beta in this case. Beta is the ratio. IC over IB, that ratio is beta for this transistor. To fix this, what you need is more base current. To get more base current, I need to make this smaller, bring that down to like 2K, and then I'll saturate it. This will be closer to 0.2, and that'll be closer to 100 milliamps. Um, another way to tell it's in the active region is the circuit board is going to get really hot. We'll get a burn mark. And hardware. If I build the circuit, again, this is one of the powered breadboards we have. This is 5 volts. This is ground. Here's my resistor. Here's my transistor, goes to the base. Here's the collector resistor, RC, that's your RB. Goes to the LED, to ground. If I measure the base voltage, it's supposed to be 0.7. Circuit lab said 0.8. Uh, when I measure it in lab, it's 0.867. Yeah, 0.7-ish. VCE. It's 0.2 volts when saturated. Simulated is 0.167. Hardware 0.318. Again, 0.2-ish. They're saturated. The base current is about 2 milliamps. The collector current is about 100 milliamps. That's typical in this class. When you calculate it, simulate it, build hardware, you're going to get three different answers. They should be close. If you're doing it right, they're close. If they're way off, something's wrong like you might have the diode in backwards um, or something wrong like that. They should be ballpark close, kind of like this. Second example, let's drive an 8-ohm speaker. Again, the reason you want to do that is if you have something wimpy, like a microprocessor, this can do 5 volts at 25 milliamps. Couple it with a transistor. So this goes, this is your RB. There's your collector. I can get some power out and get enough noise to annoy your friends and neighbors. That's what this does. In this case, notice that the transistor used isn't a 3904. The 3904 can't handle 8 ohms. 5 volts at 8 ohms is 625 milliamps. That's more than the 3904 can handle. The 6144 transistor can handle it. And what this one looks like, this is a bigger transistor. It's got a big heat sink on it. Can handle more power. Uh, come up with a circuit to let something like a microprocessor drive an 8-ohm speaker. In this case, I have 5 volts going to ground through the 8-ohm speaker. I'll lose about 0.2 volts in the transistor. 
So it's 4.8 volts at 8 ohms, 600 milliamps. When turned on, it should be drawing 600 milliamps. To find RB, I need to pick RB, to set IB, I need to pick IB so that beta IB is more than IC. Pick it so that beta IB is more than 600. Uh, to do that, if beta is 200, this has to be at least 3 milliamps. Pick a number bigger than 3, less than 25. I chose 4.3. At 4.3 milliamps, RB is 1K. And so when I apply 5 volts in, I'm allowing, essentially, beta IB, I'm allowing 860 milliamps to flow. I'm only trying to push 600. So beta IB is more than IC, I saturate, this becomes 0.2 volts, and the speaker's on. Make the zero volts, speaker's off. So now that if the voltage right here is a square wave, going between zero volts and five volts, I can have the speaker turning on and off, and it's going to pop forward, back, forward, back, do that at a frequency, and I get sound. And that's what's happening here. And Circuit Lab, I can check the design. So here's a transistor. A 6144 transistor isn't an option, so pick one that's close. Um, this one seemed kind of close. Apply 1K at the base, 8 ohms over here, 5 volts at the base, enough to power the 8 ohm speaker. And what I get is that VB is 0.977 volts. Again, it's supposed to be 0.7 volts for silicon diode. 0.7 is a ballpark figure. That's looks about like a silicon diode. VC should be 0.2 volts. And this is actually 0 0.087 volts. Okay, and that's actually better than I expected. 0.2 is close to zero, not quite zero. This is even closer to zero than I expected. So this is actually a pretty good switch. And then the current, I have four milliamps at the base. That's drawing 614 milliamps at the collector. And that's really what the transistor does for you. I take something wimpy, capable of driving four milliamps, amplifies the current. So with a transistor, I can now drive 614 milliamps. And hardware, I can check that. Again, this is a 6144 transistor. I've got a resistor going to the base. That's your RB. Uh, here's the 5 volts going to the speaker, going to the collector. Emitter's tied to ground. Uh, when I apply 5 volts at the base, I expect 0.7 volts at the base, simulated 0.97, hardware is 0.67. So it's 0.7-ish. The VCE should be 0.2 volts when saturated. It's actually better than 0.2, closer to zero, but not quite zero. IB is about 4 milliamps, not surprising. IC is about 600 milliamps, ballpark. So again, the calculated is matching the simulated, is matching the hardware. And a couple notes. In digital electronics, connect the load to the collector. What that does is 5 volts is on, 0 volts is off. When it's on, I've got the full 12 volts across your load. In analog electronics, we put the load on the emitter side. What that does is the VN is 5 volts. Here's your 0.7 volts. This is 4.3 volts. I can't get the full 12 volts across the load in this case, but what this does is as the 5 volts goes up and down, this will go up and down with it. That's really for analog electronics. And plus, the transistor is dissipating a lot of power. I've got, what, 7.7 uh, .7 volts across the transistor. It's going to get hot. That's why I have a heatsink on the 30, 3904s. In this case, it's either 0 amps or 0-ish volts, so the power is always close to 0. This one doesn't get hot. Analog will. So again, in 320, the load goes right here. 
That's for digital electronics. Analog electronics is when it goes over here. Different course. One last thing to mention. Some transistors are Darlington pairs. That's like the TIP112. The reason for that is it's hard to build a transistor that has a high gain and a high current capability. So what they do is they have two transistors. This one has a high current capability, and again, say 10. This one has a high gain and a lower current capability. Together, the gain is 1,000, and together, they can handle 4 amps. The thing you got to watch out for with the Darlington pair is there's actually two diodes, base to emitter. So the total voltage drop base to emitter is now 1.4 volts. And when I saturate it, it's no longer 0.2 volts. This has to be 0.7. So when this is 0.2, the lowest I can get VCE is 0.9 volts. So they're not quite as good as switches. They won't go quite to zero. The lowest you can do is 0.9 volts. These are really designed for analog electronics as an amplifier. You can use them as a switch, but you're going to lose 0.9 volts when you do that. As an example, if I try to drive an 8-ohm speaker with the Darlington pair, when it saturates, this is 0.9 volts. So I've got 4.1 volts at 8 ohms, 512 milliamps. Beta is 1,000. So if this is 512 milliamps, this has to be at least 512 microamps. So pick a big number bigger than 512 microamps, like 1 milliamp. This is a Darlington pair, so the voltage drop at the base is 1.4 volts rather than 0.7. I've got 3.6 volts at 1 milliamp. This is 3.6K ballpark. Again, you can vary a little bit. This doesn't have to be exactly 1 milliamp. Something bigger than 512 microamps and less than 25 milliamps. If I simulate that in Circuit Lab, again, this symbol is a Darlington pair. Uh, what I'm going to get is that VC is 0.904 volts. Again, it's 0.9 volts when saturated. VB is 1.59 volts. And then IC is 511.9 millivolts, or milliamps, I mean, versus 512.5 milliamps, about the same. So again, simulation versus calculation should be close. They'll be a little bit different, but should be close. One last thing to mention are flyback diodes. If you have an inductive load, like a motor, you need a flyback diode. The reason being is that for an inductor, V is LDIDT. So if you have a switch and current is doing this, uh, this is motor on, I have current flow, motor off, no current flow. The voltage will be LDIDT. So the voltage, if this is current, voltage will be a big spike and a negative spike, a big positive spike. The voltage could go to infinity. What's happening is there's energy in the magnetic field. When you turn off the transistor, the energy collapses, the field collapses, and the energy has to go somewhere. It will find a path to ground. If the only path to ground is through the transistor, it will arc across it, producing thousands of volts, and fry your transistor. That's how spark plugs work in your car. Take a 12-volt battery, charge up an inductor, disconnect it, and all the energy has to go somewhere. The path to ground is through your spark plug, and a 12-volt battery can produce 1,000 volts. That's good. In this case, it's bad because the 1,000 volts surprise the transistor. What this diode does is this actually is a clipping circuit. It says this voltage has to be less than 12.7 volts. If it ever goes above 12.7 volts, the diode turns on and it dumps the energy to the power supply. So that'll clip it at 12.7. That's called the flyback diode. If you ever have a switch driving a motor and the transistor works for a couple seconds, then dies, put a new transistor in, works for a couple seconds, and dies. That's what's happening. The inductance is frying the transistor. To fix it, add a flyback diode. So in summary, transistors can be used as an electronic switch. To do that, you need to pick a transistor that can handle the load. You place the load on the collector side, connect the emitter to ground, and then pick RB, so that the current that you get, IB, is such that beta IB is bigger than IC.
and that's using a transistor as a switch.